Turbo Extreme Standard, you know, I'm gonna put this in the standard. System Memory Multiplier, this gives you your memory multiplier. Um, the higher you go, the more obviously frequency on your memory. Also, the higher you put your base clock, the higher the memory will go. The timings on the memory, you can also adjust those um, for better stability if you go even higher on the CPU. This should be fine for now though, we're not going as high. And your voltages, we just did a couple notches up here on the V-Core and on the QPI VTT voltage and also put our DRAM, uh, the memory modules voltage at 1.64. Okay, so I'm going to get out of the screen, go save and exit. It'll ask me if I want to save. I press Y, yes. And now the CPU will reboot. And uh, it'll, it'll come with the new frequency that we just set. It's It was the 150 times 20. So that will give us 3.0 gigahertz on the frequency. Um, as soon as we boot into Windows, we want to see if our processor is stable and to you know to check your stability there is different programs you can use I use the Intel Intel burn uh, burn test which uses uh, some you know it's like extremely burning in your CPU um, putting a lot of you know a lot of work onto it so basically that way you can test if it's stable or not if it freezes up or if you get a blue screen of death that means your voltage is not high enough on the v-core um, it's most of the time it would be your v-core that you need to top the uh, you know put the voltage up a little bit higher um, and then you will go and try to, uh, to test your stability again so this is kind of a you know kind of a lot of work well not a lot of work it's a lot of uh, waiting because you need to wait till your system reboots and then you need to um, see, you know, test it for stability for at least, well, you know, 20 30 minutes. Um, and now I have some of these programs in here actually. One of them is called, like I was saying, the Intel Burn Test version 2. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Okay. Um, basically, you'll leave it on 5, 5 times to run this is your avail available memory in here um, leave it in standard and bring up two of them two of the uh, instances and then you just go start see and then on my other screen I'll show you I have a little CPU meter here see if I can zoom in a little oh, that's pretty blurry okay um this shows you the frequency. We this is like a gadget, uh, one of those Windows gadgets. Uh, I should probably open up a little bit something more professional. Um, the CPU dash Z. You can actually download this for free. Will tell you everything you need about your CPU and your memory. Okay, here. Um, here the core voltage. Um, it tells you your core voltage, your revision of your CPU, your batch number, your speed, your the frequency, the multiplier. We set everything in the BIOS and just tells you just to double check on here. Uh, you can also go to your memory setting here. It'll tell you how much you got, what's your frequency on there. Um, and your you just basically you know your hardware information here that this program does tell you. Um, so it's pretty nice. This is pretty neat. But now we're running the uh, here. We're running the tests here, and you know we already pa uh, you know passed our first first uh, you know time first time to run, and uh, this will do five times. I'm gonna stop it for now. Um, like I said, this will test your CPU to to its max um, and the max temperatures. If you wanted to download one of these things here, it actually shows you your temperature as well. So that's nice. Um, for the for the i7s, for the i7s, um, I would not recommend going over like 90 degrees Celsius. 
under load. Um, if you go you know over 90 um, while you're testing your stability, I would just recommend doing a little bit lower voltage and lower clock because I mean over 90, 24/7, you you don't want to be at that at those temperatures. Um, I believe the TJ Max for the i7s is was like 110. I think after you know 100, there's they'll actually start the chips will start throttle, throttling, which means um, they'll start slowing down on their own to prevent from burning. So anywhere from you know 60 to 75 ish, if you're doing under load, uh, you know on. I would recommend those kind of temperatures are fine, uh, and we're on air too. Um, I personally run the the i7 on air cooler, and I run at the 4.0 gigahertz frequency, and I don't get past. Um, well, if I go test this, uh, you know, the the torture test, if I run it for a couple minutes or a couple hours, the temperatures stay at about 80, 82 degrees Celsius. So it's not perfect, but um, I also have a case that's enclosed in like a wooden hole in my desk so that's really not good for it but there's nothing else I can do about that um, so that's basically it guys um, now if we want to go even higher we would go back to our bias and increase your clock your base clock frequency but also with that, make sure you have in mind that you need to increase your voltage according, accordingly. Um, so the voltage, you don't want to go that little like uh, too much on the voltage. You want to go, you want to stay in between 1.25, um, and you don't want to go over 1.1.45. Okay, if you go anywhere over that, you you definitely want to have at least water cooling set up and really just, you know, a good chip. And I say good chip because not all the chips are the same. Um, you know, you might have a friend that clocks his at 3.9 and he runs at 1.31 um, voltage. Um, and, you know, you, you will never get that because you have a different chips. Uh, so you might have to bump your voltage up to yeah, I don't know 1.35 to run that you know that's perfectly normal so don't be disappointed if you can't get the same clocks as others um, and if you go research on the internet um, you know people will tell you that they have this and that just don't try to match that um, you you have a different completely different chip um, you know and it depends if you have a good one you might do really low voltage which will yield into low temperatures and you might do a nice frequency you know um, I personally my settings are four um, four gigahertz on the frequency and uh, my V core voltage as uh, is at uh, 1.36 which is okay but I definitely need an aftermarket cooler for that um, if I had the stock one, you know, uh, I'm not sure what would happen. Probably the temperatures would probably go through the roof, and it would just be really, really loud. Now, um, if you guys have any questions, please ask. I'll see if I can answer those. Um, also, I can show you some pictures or some videos of my system, how I have it set up, um, and my C uh, my uh, CPU cooler that I have. It's the Prolimatech Mega Alums. Mega Shadow, um, it's it's a pretty good cooler I think. It's you know it's one of the uh, the better ones that you wanna see. You don't wanna cheap out on the CPU cooler because if you wanna really get the most out of your CPU, uh, you wanna you wanna have good temperatures. Now I also lapped my CPU, which I don't really wanna get into. That's a little bit more advanced technique of keeping the temperatures down. Basically, what you do is you uh, buy series of uh, sandpapers um, and sanding papers, and you sand down the default your your stock heatsink on the CPU on the chip itself on the actual unit, and uh, you sand it down to all the way to the copper base, and uh, that will actually make a better contact with the, with the seat, uh, with the heatsink and with the cooler. 
but that's a little bit more advanced like I said um, I can make it uh, maybe like an in informative video about that later but for now this is the basic steps for your you know core i7 overclocks and uh, like I said if you have any questions please ask and uh, yeah that's about it look out